So I want to thank Dr. Forsman for sitting in uh, in the lab that I had to miss. And I want to thank ITV uh, for enabling me to record this lecture. So you guys uh, that had to um, that I had to miss your lab that you get a chance to see this. Okay. So today we're going to learn about uh, the digestive tract, and you're going to do some gross anatomy and you're going to look at some models. But I wanted to take a second to kind of walk you through the histology of the wall of your digestive tract because this is one of the most fascinating things in the human body as far as I'm concerned because your digestive tract takes the same four layers and uses them to create all the organs of your digestive tract. Much like the menu at Taco Bell all contains the same four ingredients. You've got a tortilla, some meat, some cheese, beans, bam. That's everything on the menu from tostada to taco to burrito. It's the same four ingredients. Likewise, all the regions of your alimentary canal or your digestive tract are made of the same four regions, but it's modification to those regions that makes each individual organ distinct and enables it to do its job correctly. So what I'm going to do is show you the four regions, show you kind of where they stop, where they start, and what they're made out of, and then I'm going to walk you through the different regions of the alimentary canal that you're going to be looking at and we're going to see how these four layers are rearranged and modified to give you all the different regions of the alimentary canal. So we're going to start with the innermost layer of the alimentary canal wall. This is the one that's closest to the food. And this is called the mucosa because it's a mucous membrane. Now the mucosa itself has three sub layers. So the mucosa is the first layer, but it's made of three parts. The first is the epithelium. The epithelium is going to form this barrier between the lumen of the alimentary canal, or what is effectively outside your body, and the body's interior. Underneath this epithelium will have a thin lamina propria. It's a thin layer of connective tissue that's going to provide the linkage between the epithelium and all the tissues underneath it. And then the last layer of the mucosa is the muscularis mucosae. So if we zoom in here on our slide and we look, we can see these layers of the mucosa quite clearly up here at the top of our picture. So the uppermost layer right here, I'm outlining it in blue, let's try red, that's a little better, is the epithelium. We're in the esophagus right now, so that's going to be a stratified squamous epithelium. Underneath the epithelium, so right here, is going to be the lamina propria. And then finally, I'm just going to kind of draw a line around it, we have the muscularis mucosa. So if you look at the things I've outlined here in red, you can see these pockets of smooth muscle tissue surrounded by a little white gap. That's a little bit of connective tissue that surrounds each pocket of smooth muscle. So this is the mucosa. So everything from the lumen to the bottom of muscularis mucosa is mucosa. So this is layer one, and then it has three sublayers, A, B, and C, in the epithelium, lamina propria, and muscularis mucosa. Directly underneath muscularis mucosa is the second layer of the alimentary canal wall. That is the submucosa, sub meaning under. So that's pretty easy. If we look on this picture on the right, first thing let's do is let's find where the mucosa starts and stops. The picture on the right is of the duodenum, the first part of your small intestine. So the mucosa is everything up here, so all of this stuff, all the way down to right here. This is muscularis mucosa. I'm drawing a line under it right now. So everything above muscularis mucosa and above is mucosa. Immediately beneath muscularis mucosa, we can see some connective tissue and we see some glands. These, along with arteries, veins, nerve plexuses, and sometimes lymphatic tissue, are the things you're going to find in the submucosa. We'll see different modifications to the submucosa uh, that will enable each region of the canal to do its job. The submucosa ends at this layer of muscle tissue down here underneath it called muscularis externa. That's our next layer. 
So the submucosa has muscle at the top in the form of muscularis mucosae and muscle at the bottom in the form of muscularis externa. So everything in between these two muscle layers is the submucosa. <clears throat> Let's just review real quick. We're back in the esophagus again. Here's the epithelium, lamina propria, muscularis mucosa. So all of these together make up the mucosa. Underneath there, we have the submucosa. And then underneath the submucosa, we find muscularis externa. And muscularis externa itself actually has two layers. It has an inner circular layer and an outer longitudinal layer. So if you look real carefully, you can see, especially towards the top, that the muscle fibers are running kind of right to left. If we were to draw a tube representing the alimentary canal, we would see that the circular layers are going to wrap around the canal, like this. The longitudinal layers that we see down here would be coming out of the screen at us, or if we were looking at this from the side, they would be running this way. Okay? And keep in mind that the picture we're looking at is a section, a cross section through the canal. Okay, so the third layer is muscularis mucosa, and then the outermost layer is either called the serosa or the adventitia, depending on where it is in the body. Either way, it's comprised of uh, generally a loose connective tissue, and it's going to be covered by a special type of epithelial-like tissue called the mesothelium. And in the peritoneal cavity, so down in your abdomen, it's called a serosa. And that serosa, it's called a serosa because it's a serous membrane. It's secreting serous fluid, which is going to lubricate the alimentary canal as uh, the different regions rub against one another in your abdominal cavity. It's also <clears throat> got a little pinch on it. So if you can imagine, and we'll zoom in on this and show you, but imagine here's the wall of the canal, and here is that adventitia or serosal layer. If we were to pinch it outward, say just kind of pinch it up and out, what you would eventually end up with is a kind of a long flap. That long flap is called the mesentery. You'll remember our mesenteric arteries and veins. They're running through this flap of connective tissue. So we can kind of zoom in and see how the adventitia or the serosa in this case is pulled up into this flap called the mesentery. So when you look at the mesentery in the models, this is what it's made out of. It's that outermost layer of the wall. Now, when, this, uh, when the alimentary canal is in the thoracic cavity, it's called the adventitia because it's not a serous secreting membrane. It's just serving to anchor the canal or the esophagus into the tissues around it. Okay, so those are the four layers, mucosa, submucosa, muscularis externa, and serosa. Now let's look at the regions of the alimentary canal that you're going to be seeing in lab, and let me point out the major features to you so that you can more easily recognize them in the microscope. The first region you'll look at is the esophagus. The easiest way to recognize the esophagus is by the very conspicuous stratified squamous epithelium. This is the only region of the alimentary canal that has a stratified squamous epithelium. It's going to be there to resist abrasion. It's a good thing to have. This is also the best part of the alimentary canal for seeing all three layers of the mucosa. So you can see the epithelium, the lamina propria, and the muscularis mucosae. So the esophagus is easily recognized by that epithelium. Now as we move down, we see that the epithelium is going to change. Now we're in the stomach, and the mucosa has been folded up. So if we look way down here at the very bottom of the picture on the left, you'll see a thin layer of strappy looking tissue right down here at the bottom. That's muscularis mucosa. So all of this is mucosa. And we see that the mucosa has been folded into these gastric glands. So up here at the top, we have these little gastric pits. 
see right down here, these openings, those are the gastric pits. And those are lined by mucus cells or mucus neck cells that are going to protect the rest of the stomach from the acidic contents. As you move downward in the gastric pits uh, into the gastric glands, you will notice some large red cells. So we see a lot of them right here. Those are the parietal cells. Those are the cells that are secreting your stomach acid and various other substances, but we think of them as the stomach acid cells. And then down at the bottom, you will notice some dark blue, much smaller cells. They're not as big as in, and inflated um, as the parietal cells, and they're blue um, instead of red. And those are your chief cells, and these are going to be secreting some digestive enzymes. And we'll get into the specifics of that later. Right now, what I want you to be able to do is recognize the gastric pits, the mucous neck cells, the parietal cells, and the chief cells, and also to be able to recognize that this is the stomach. Okay, there are three regions of the small intestine. You're going to find all of those on one slide. The first region, the one nearest the stomach, is the duodenum. You'll notice that the mucosa, so again let me highlight muscularis mucosa, I'll circle it here in blue, so everything from here up is mucosa. And you'll see that the mucosa has been folded into these finger-like extensions called villi. Okay, So you see these finger-like folds of the mucosa. So it's just been folded up. When you see these villi, these finger-like folds, and you see these Brunner's glands down in the submucosa. So again, if this is muscularis mucosa, here's muscularis externa. So all of this in the bracket is the submucosa. These large structures with the holes in the middle are, a, are coiled exocrine glands. And these are going to be secreting an alkaline substance that's going to help protect the duodenum from any remaining stomach acid. Okay, so if you see those Brunner's glands in the submucosa, you know it's duodenum. The jejunum doesn't have much of anything going on special in its submucosa. If you zoom way out, low magnification on your slides, you might be able to see that the villi are themselves on some extra folds called the plicae circularis. So you can see that we have a large fold here, these large folds, and then each large fold has a bunch of smaller folds on them. This is going to vastly increase the surface area of the jejunum and make absorption of nutrients much more efficient. And then finally, the last region of the small intestine is the ileum. And the ileum is also going to be folded into villi. You're going to see a lot more goblet cells, these white cells out here on the villi. But the most conspicuous feature of the ileum are these very large pockets of lymphatic tissue that are found in the submucosa, and these are called Peyer's patches. These Peyer's patches are so big and so conspicuous that if you actually slide the, pull the slide off the stage of the microscope and hold it up to the light, you'll actually be able to see them with your naked eye. And these are going to serve an immune protective effect, uh, an immune protective function because the ileum is so close to the large bowel or the large intestine. Speaking of the large intestine, you're also going to be looking at the colon. The easiest way to recognize the colon is by the preponderance of goblet cells in the mucosa. So if you look at the epithelium of the colon up close, what you'll see is numerous, what appear to be almost empty, inflated looking cells scattered around in the epithelium of the colon. These are called goblet cells because if you look at this one right here, you see the way it's shaped. Um, that actually kind of looks like somebody took a wine goblet and just turned it on its side, like so. These goblet cells secrete mucus, and they're going to lubricate the colon um, as the contents of the colon become dehydrated and are formed into feces. So there you go, the four layers of the alimentary canal wall and each region of the alimentary canal that we're going to be looking at in lab, the esophagus, the stomach, the duodenum, jejunum, ileum, and colon. If you, have any, if you have any questions or concerns, uh, you can either ask Dr. Forsman during lab, or if you're watching this after lab, you can always email me, Facebook me, call me at 94566, 
or stop by my office hours Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 2.45 to 4. Thanks a lot. Good luck.